One feature that's been in the Super Mario Bros. series since the very beginning are the boss fights that cap off each world, usually having to face off against Bowser or a Koopaling. However, sometimes Nintendo throws out a curveball and includes something unique. These amazing foes gave me the idea for today's video, looking at the most forgotten bosses in every single Super Mario Bros. game, really jogging great memories with some of the big bads I'm going to show you, a few of which you might not even know about at all. Oh yeah, before we get started here, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. The very first game, Super Mario Bros., was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985, only containing King Koopa as the end boss of each world. But some might not remember that the first seven are actually all decoys. These decoys are actually regular enemies that have been transformed into Bowser. I guess as an attempt to slow Mario down as you guide him to the real castle. But you can only tell that this is a fact if you kill them via Fireball, showing you their true selves. I'm going to assume this was all done by Kamek, as later in the games there's a lot of him transforming enemies to make them tougher. Super Mario Bros. 2 was the next western release in the series. And this game had some weird bosses, probably because of it being a reskin of a completely different Japanese title. Anyways, I think the most forgotten one from it is the Claw Grip of World 5. This is obviously a crab-like being, but here it throws boulders at you, needing to catch them and throw them back to deal damage. I'm really not sure why I didn't remember this interesting bad guy. Most likely I just warped over it too many times, I'm not sure. Either way, it's not really like it's the best boss ever, and this is the only entry it ever appears in. The final of the original NES trilogy, Super Mario Bros. 3, came out in North America in 1990, containing a few obscure bosses I want to showcase, starting with Ludwig von Koopa. This strange foe is found in the airship at the end of World 7, and I wanted to include him in this video as he slams his turtle-like body down on the ground a move I can't recall him ever being able to do. If you're caught on the ground while one of these body slam earthquakes are occurring, then you'll briefly get stunned in place, unable to move. Although, to be quite honest, you have to be pretty bad to lose to any of the Koopalings in this title at all. The only others I want to mention from this game are a pair of very cool but forgotten Boom Boom boss fights. Starting with the World 5 Fortress, where you encounter one of these baddies who have grown a pair of wings. This adds a whole nother layer to the face-off, as you have to worry about the mini-boss flying at you, which actually makes things a little bit more difficult. The other is the Boom Boom that can be found at the end of the World 8 Fortress, here having to fight it on a moving conveyor belt, which again, just adds to the difficulty. I don't remember these specific battles against these foes at all, and to this day whenever I play through them, I'm always surprised by how out of place they feel. The first handheld entry in the franchise is Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, having two specific bosses I want to look at in the context of this video, starting with the Hyoyoi of World 3. I think it being mentioned here all has to do with you not needing to even damage this rock being at all, only required to use the boulders it throws to platform over it, triggering the switch behind it to win. The lack of action is probably why this boss isn't so memorable. But if you are rushing, you actually can have trouble getting to the switch, as a few times it did fall into the void. The other boss I want to showcase is the Bio Kintun, a cloud that protects the Totanga, throwing chickens towards Mario in that aerial stage. This isn't that hard to beat, and is the setup for the much tougher fight against the alien final Totanga boss, so it makes sense why Minnie might pass this one over. The next release in the series is Super Mario World for the SNES which has a couple somewhat forgettable big bads I want to mention, starting with the Big Boo boss found in a secret area in the Donut Ghost House. This foe acts very different than the normal small boos you'd find in the different ghost houses, here only being able to be beaten if you fling three grab blocks at it, while also positioning yourself properly so you don't take any damage. Winning this fight lets you access a path going towards Star World, and again, because it is in a secret spot, it's not exactly that well known. There is one Koopaling battle that has an area you fight within that I forgot about in Wendy's, that takes place in the castle of Chocolate Island. Here, Wendy uses two decoys that pop out of different pipes, with you needing to bonk off the real version of the foe to deal damage. 
I of course remember this Koopaling as a character, but didn't exactly recall the arena you fight her in, even though you'd think something this crazy would stick out in your memory. The second handheld installment in the series is Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy, containing two bosses I literally forgot were even in the game in the Sewer Rat and the Three Little Pigs. The rat is found at the end of the macro zone, taking place within a room with three pipes where they can enter and exit, attacking you from all different angles. Now, this game is relatively rudimentary, so this battle is super simple. So maybe how fast you go through it, maybe completely just forget about it, it makes sense. Now, I'm really not sure how I somehow omitted the three little pigs from my memory, as they're very out of place for a Mario entry, coming out one at a time to face you. The first is apparently named Burrow, living in a straw house, attacking by rolling back and forth. The second is named Butcho, who lives in a wooden house, bouncing around the stage trying to damage you. And the third and final is Boopon, who also jumps around, but at different heights each time, making him kinda hard to predict. I guess in this scenario, you're supposed to be the wolf, even though they're the bad guys from your point of view. So either they're squatting and you're removing them, or Mario's actually the invader in this story. The first game to be based within the 3D realm is Super Mario 64 for the N64, where really the only boss I feel like could be considered somewhat forgotten is the Wiggler, found within the mountain of Tiny Huge Island. This takes place during the sixth star of the course, where this big, long foe became angered with everything due to his habitat getting flooded by Mario. Here, you have to stomp on his head three times, all while avoiding its maniacal outbursts, where he runs around the stage like an out-of-control train, trying to flatten you. I guess because this is a later star in the course that you might not actually play in the end, as it is sort of optional in beating the game. At least, that's my explanation for why it slipped my mind. Next up is Super Mario Sunshine that came out for the GameCube in 2002. Having only one boss I guess you could say was forgettable in the Monty Mole, found both in Pinna Park and Noki Bay. Here the mole operates a cannon firing bullet bills and glorpedos at you, while from time to time popping out of its hatch to throw some bob bombs. All you have to do is spray those bombs to neutralize them, then pick them up and throw them back at this weird foe, doing this three times to defeat him. These two fights aren't really considered monumental moments in the entry, so you have to understand why many people might just gloss over them. Nintendo would return everything to its 2D roots with the release of new Super Mario Bros. for the dual screen system, having a couple bosses I can confidently label as forgotten, starting with the Mega Goomba. In this entry, basically every big bad you face off against has been transformed in some way by Bowser Jr., resulting in much more horrifying versions of regular enemies we're used to. In most cases, making them appear much, much bigger. I really think I'd remember fighting this Goliath, as it truly takes up almost the entirety of your screen, but it does reside in one of the two worlds that can be only accessed through a small opening in the previous one's boss fight, aka needing to be powered up with a mini mushroom. So if you aren't a completionist, I get why this one might be missed. The Lack of Thunder boss also falls into this category as being in one of those secretly accessed worlds, being an evil looking, cloud riding Koopa who tries to kill you with its bolts of lightning and spinies it throws down. This fight isn't hard as it just takes three bonks to defeat, which you can easily do when it swoops down at you. I actually do love these bosses after going through them, I just wish they didn't put them in such a hard to get to spot. In the space-based Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii, there's two specific bosses that I found fit this video, starting with Camella, found in the space junk and deep dark galaxies. This female version of Kamek is wearing purple and red robes instead of the iconic blue ones we're used to, but do act essentially the same, using magic attacks against you while using teleportation to dodge your own. Even with the multiple battles against this boss, I won't lie, I didn't even have any recollection of them at all. Maybe because this is a girl magic Koopa and I never fully realized that for some reason? I don't know. Another baddie that I somehow completely ignored, even though I played this game several times, is the Tartanox, found wrapped within a web of the Space Junk Galaxy. This is a very different type of fight, as here you have to use the sling pods found within the spider's web to fling Mario towards and damage the weak spots of the creature's body. 
After popping each of the glowing growths on the spider, it gets angry and regains its footing, moving even faster this time. Having to go through the same steps, albeit a bit more difficult, to defeat it. You'd think that a three-eyed, toxic spitting arachnid would be engraved in my mind, especially due to my hatred of the eight-legged freaks. But maybe its goofiness stripped away any memorability. The second installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the Wii in 2009, containing multiple versions of battles against each of the Koopalings, where one I forgot is against Iggy Koopa and his Chain Chomp. This occurs as the Castle Fight of World 5, where Iggy sits in a carriage attached to a kamek induced giant Chain Chomp, traveling around this area on a rail, trying to damage you. For some unknown reason, I had completely blanked on the fact that there were two versions of boss fights in this game, and the majority of the castle ones are pretty wacky. This also includes Ludwig von Koopas, which takes place on a series of elevators that are continually moving upwards while changing speeds at times. You need to skillfully jump between the three platforms and bonk off the Koopaling three times. Not exactly a straightforward thing to do. The second entry in the space-based subseries came out for the Wii in 2010, having a bunch of boss battles that aren't particularly memorable, starting with the Giga slash King Lakitu found in the Yoshi Star Galaxy. Now, judging off the level's name, you of course need to use your Dino Buddy to slurp up the spinies the Lakitu throws at you, then you need to spit them back at him to deal damage. I sort of wish this boss fight was a bit more fun, as it just lacks any substance or really any difficulty at all. The next two bosses I want to look at are both bug-like creatures in the Bugaboom and Mandibug stack, where in both cases you have to ground pound their backs to beat them. I always hated these specific bosses as they weren't that much fun and just annoying to try and complete, especially when they get mad and angrily rampage within the stage. Maybe it's more that I want them to be forgotten, and not that they're actually forgotten, but I digress. Nintendo would combine aspects of the 2D and 3D series with Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS. Having pretty simplistic boss battles where the enemies themselves are all pretty memorable, but does contain a few stages where the fights take place that are somewhat obscure. One example of this is the second airship boss of the Special World 4 where you face off against a pom-pom in an arena that includes several donut blocks that fall into the void when you stand on them for too long. Others that fall into this category include World 3's airship, which takes place on a conveyor belt. There's also World 6's airship that has fire pits. And the first boss fight is Special 4 against the Boom Boom, that contains spikes that raise and lower from the ground. I really hated how easy these fights were, and you wouldn't really spend long enough in them to remember them anyways. The next installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out in 2012 for the 3DS, where once again at nauseum, the Koopalings are used as each world's end boss, although there are a few notable unmemorable fights, starting with Wendy's. This is in the World 3 Castle, and actually takes place in an underwater setting, having to dodge the boss's attacks and the cheap cheeps that swim around the stage, waiting for the water to lower so you can finally strike. Another I want to show is Ludwig von Koopa of World 5's castle, needing to use the cannons at the bottom of the screen to shoot yourself upwards and stun the boss. I think that this specific entry was just very underwhelming and didn't live up to the Mario standard that we grew accustomed to. Not saying that it's terrible, it's just easy and forgettable. The final entry of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the Wii U in 2012, having two bad guys that fit perfectly in this video. Starting things off with the boss sumo bro fight within the screw top tower. This is literally one of the only bosses in this title that isn't actually a Koopaling, and instead, Kamek transforms this baddie to grow to incredible sizes just so it can face off against our mustachioed hero. This giant sumo bro stomps the platform he's on, sending electrical waves through the ground that can hurt you, with you needing to bonk the platform he's standing on to stun him, then bonk off his exposed belly to hurt him. Another boss that fits in this category and also isn't a Koopaling, although is still a series regular, is the Boom Boom, where during its Soda Jungle fight, Kamek also grows this creature in size, making it slightly more formidable. Even so, I can't say it will give you any trouble to defeat at all, especially if you're powered up in any way. Next to come out is Super Mario 3D World, first released on the Wii U, then later re-released on the Switch. 
with only one boss that's forgettable as it's so out of place in the Histocat, found first in World 3B. This foe consists of one royal looking purple snake and its teal colored servants, needing to jump on the plates on their heads so you can bonk off of the king. In between hits, the main snake sends rocks flying in the air, which then fall down on the stage in an attempt to damage you, but shouldn't be too hard to dodge. There's also the Queen Histocat fight that's found in World Bowser, acting basically the same, but now the boss sends fiery rocks down on the stage, which leaves puddles of lava wherever they land. In World Flower's boss blitz stage, there's a part where you have to battle against both monarchs at the same time, adding a lot of chaos as they take up a large portion of the arena. I'm glad they changed up the bosses a lot in this title, but because they aren't Mario regulars, some of them do come across as a bit random. Next is the massive Super Mario Odyssey entry that came up for the Switch in 2017, having three enemies that I actually forgot about in writing this video, starting with the Torque Drift. This is found in the secret flower field of the Wooded Kingdom, and interestingly is a robotic flying saucer somewhat reminiscent of past Mario foes like the Spindrifts or Top Man, needing here to capture an uproot to break the blocks it's holding, then damage its weak spot when it's exposed. After carefully maneuvering around its energy attacks and avoiding its lasers, you'll break this machine and win the multi-moon against this strange boss. The second I want to mention is the Kukatil, that maybe is so grotesque you might want to forget about it found in the Luncheon Kingdom. This is a large, hen-like bird that's dressed up like a chef, which at first you think would be cute, but in this case is extremely disturbing, being so fat it's barely able to fly around the stew to damage you. Once you capture the Podobo, you need to use it to swim up the projectile lava that's spewed out at you from time to time, which is gross, so you can get to the top and bonk off of its head. This is one of the most unhinged bosses Nintendo's ever created, and I'm sort of surprised it was even allowed, as it goes against their usually family-friendly image. The last boss I want to mention are the fights against the Mecha Brutals found in both Bowser's Kingdom, and as the final battle on the dark side of the moon. Here, all the Brutal Rabbits combine forces, a la Power Rangers or Voltron, to create a gigantic robot being that has glass weak points where the Brutals appear. This can be hard to beat, especially when they're throwing their full arsenal of attacks at you meaning you're bound to die a few times before you complete it. The final Mario entry we're going to look at in this video is the Bowser's Fury game mode that was bundled alongside the re-release of Super Mario 3D World for the Switch, where there's one fight that I completely blanked out of my mind in the one against the Cat Prince Bully found close to Mount Magmeow. This fight is essentially the same as when the boss appeared in Super Mario 3D World, needing to knock him into the clear pipes which then leaves him vulnerable when they come out of the other side. I guess this one is catified, and as a bonus does spit out fireballs, but it wasn't enough to be notable I guess. Alright that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, subscribe to my channel, and go please follow me on Instagram at copycatgamer, there I'll put some cool clips, and I just write collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!